Hi, Dr. Brian Mills from Mountain View, California, and today I want to be talking to you about taking the basic bioaesthetic photographic series, and I hope what I have to show you today is helpful. Uh, first, I'd like to start off with what we use. Um, I happen to use two different cameras. The first one is a uh, Canon Rebel. It's a nice camera. I use this for the intraoral pictures. It has an intraoral uh, lens and a ring flash. This particular setup, can you can get it from photomed.net. The second camera I use is also a Canon Rebel. This one is set up for portraits. And if you notice, I have a diffuser up on top here. The diffuser you can get from GaryFong.com. He also has a complete portrait kit for doing nice portrait photography. It's well worth getting, and I think you'll appreciate having that in your office. Also, we're going to be using retractors. There are basically two types. There are metal retractors. and we have plastic retractors. I prefer the plastic ones, but I've seen plenty of nice photography using metal retractors. So again, that's a personal choice. Last, we have a little black background here, and this is by SmileLine.com, and it's an excellent little tool if you want to just feature a particular area in the mouth and uh, you'll be seeing that too. We'll demonstrate that later. Okay, well, thank you very much. So what I, let's start with what not to do. First, you don't want your patient seated in a dental chair. And let me just go over why. When you're taking your portrait shots, you won't be able to have the patient in a natural head posture. The headrest is gonna interfere with how she positions her head and her neck and her back. Secondly, is that when you're taking your facial shots, if I have Julia turned towards me so I can actually see her face straight on, you notice it completely changes the musculature here, here, and over here. So we aren't gonna get a true representation of her head, neck, and facial musculature. Also, when we're doing the retracted photographs for the intraoral, I'm gonna to have to have her turn towards me again, and it, it is almost impossible not to skew your pictures somehow. Uh, I've never seen a straight picture taken from a dental chair with it not being skewed to the side. So the first thing you want to do is have the patient get out of the dental chair. Let's go ahead and start this way. All right. So here we have our patient, Julia, seated. And a couple things we want to notice is when you're seating your patient, these are going to be diagnostic photographs. So first of all, the hair, we have to be careful that we have the hair off the ears so we'll be able to see in here. We don't want sunglasses on or any kind of glasses and a lot of times people just want to flip them up like that. You don't want to do that either because it will interfere with your diagnostic photographs. And also if you want to feature any of these photographs in a presentation, it just looks bad. So let's have Julia take the glasses off. And sit up. And the other thing, you don't want them to be hunching. You want them in natural head posture. How you do that, some people have them stand. I prefer them seated. It's easier for me. You want them to just sit up nice and straight. And the eyes need to be level with the horizon. Okay? So tip your chin up like you're looking up. This you don't want to have. You notice you can't really see the profile properly. And now tip, tip your chin way in. So it changes also her facial profile. So you want her to head up and looking straight into the horizon. And just take it off your ears. Thank you. And on the other side also. Okay. The other thing you notice is she has some small earrings. That's perfectly fine. If they're large, earrings that have weight on them, they'll distort this part of the face when you're trying to take your pictures. So no earrings, no heavy jewelry, and no glasses. Okay, so now we have Julia seated. We're going to be doing our portrait shots. Uh, just a 
couple things as an overview. You want a nice background, okay? Another thing, when you're in the dental chair, you don't have a good background for your portraits. I happen to be using a black felt background that you can purchase at most camera stores, or this is one of the parts that come with the portrait kit from GaryFong.com. You can also use a blue background. That actually gives a nice look also. It's a personal preference. Okay, so we'll be starting our portraits now. So the first series of shots, we're just going to have Julia sit up nice and straight. And when you're framing your shot, you don't want to have it too wide. You almost want to have it framed into your, how your final cut is going to be. So the first shot, we're just going to ask Julia, give me a big smile. Great. Now, gently bite down. Don't clench, but teeth together, lips together. Look straight. Thank you. Give me one more big smile. Great. Now all you're going to do, Julia, is you're going to turn your chair 45 degrees. Look right into that corner. Turn your chair. And I want you to look straight into that corner. Sit up nice and straight. Chin down slightly. Lips together. Teeth together. Give me a big smile. Now you're just going to turn your chair 90 degrees. Look out the window for me. Sit up nice and straight. Lips together, teeth together. Give me a big smile. Great. Now you're going to come back at 45. So this next shot, a lot of times you'll want to feature a nice portrait shot, just not more like a mug shot. So I found that if you just have the patient sit at 45 degrees, have them turn their head towards me and then say something silly like, I'm going to Disneyland. Give me a nice big smile. And you're going to find that creates a really nice portrait for a final picture and also a before picture. I want to thank my friend Tim Leary for showing me that trick. Now let's do the other side. Come forward. Now you're going to turn 45 this way. Look straight into the corner. 45 degrees right into this corner. Sit up nice and straight. Tip your chin down slightly. Lips together, teeth together. Give me a big smile. Now you're going to turn 90 degrees. Look straight. Sit up nice and straight. Lips together, teeth together. Give me a big smile. Now you're going to come back at 45 degrees for me, Julia. And stay seated like that. Turn your head towards me. and I'm going to Diddyland. There we go. Oh, nice. One more. Okay. And that pretty much completes our portrait photographs. Go ahead and start our close-up photography. And you notice we've changed cameras. So the first series is without retractors and we're trying to get a pretty good idea of the structure of the lips and the cheeks and this area of her face. So, Julia, what I want you to do is just lightly just sneak in here a little bit. Lightly touch your teeth together, and that's good. Tip your head up a little bit. Now lips together, teeth together very lightly, no clenching. Now lips together, teeth apart. Okay. Now I want you next, you're going to go Emma. Emma. Yeah, just go Emma and let your lips relax. The Emma is a great way, or you can go duh, but you want a repose. The lips relaxed and reposed. You're looking at the incisal edges here. Good. Next you're going to go E. Put your big E, like cheese. This will help to show um, teeth and if there's any gingival issues. And next I want you to do the largest smile you can. Okay. 
Okay, now you're going to turn 45 degrees, and we're going to do the same thing. Now, normally you're just doing the 90 degree picture, but 45, we're going to do the same sequence. Even though you might not need them, it's better to have and not need than need and not have. So a lot of times when you're setting up to do your photographs, you don't know how the case is going to turn out. You don't know what photos you're going to want to use to feature certain parts of the case. So it's better to take extras. You can always take extras. Okay, so same thing. You're just going to go lips together, teeth together. Slight smile for me. Big, big smile. Say Emma. Emma. Say E. E. Now you're going to go 90 degrees for me. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. Come back just a little bit. There we go. By the way, when you're doing your 90 degrees, and this is <clears throat> for that setup, mainly for the portraits, but also to make sure they're not overturned, you should be able to just see a bit of the far eyebrow. That means that's at a good position for them. Okay, so same thing. Lips together, teeth together. Tip your chin up ever so slightly. Slight smile. Big smile. Say Emma. Emma. Say E. e. Okay. So that's pretty much our series. We can do the other side too. All right. Now we'll be. Uh, placing retractors and doing the retracted series. So one hint uh, for patient comfort, I wet these with some warm water. And so I have the patients go ahead and uh, place those for me. If they've already placed them one time, they're experts. And bite down. And then the other thing, I like them to hold it. First, it's easier. Freeze your hands up and freeze your assistant. But also for comfort. They know how hard they want to pull. So. Real simple, we're going to be doing our intraorals here. So one hint, you don't want her tipped down too much because if you're shooting down on the teeth, you won't be able to see the proper cusp form. So tip slightly up. Good. Teeth slightly apart. Bite down again. Now don't take these out, but take tension off of this one and pull that one for me. Reel as hard as you can and tip a little towards me so I can see. Now we're going to be just doing the buckle corridor shot. Teeth slightly apart. Bite down. Now tension off of this one. Pull that one. Bite down. Teeth slightly apart. Bite down. Now we're going to be doing our functional positions. So again, I always just cue it up with teeth together. Now bring your teeth out edge to edge for me. And on this one, if you want to, you can go ahead and have them tension off of this one. Pull this one so you can look. Pull a little harder if you can. Thank you. Tension off of that one, pull that one. Bite down. And you have the patient reset before you do your lateral movements. So now go ahead and grind to the right slightly, a little bit more, and hold. Make your canines go all the way to the edge. Tip your head up ever so slightly. Bring your canines all the way so they're tip to tip. Keep going, keep going, stop. Tension off of this one, pull that one up, bite down, grind to the grind to your left again and hold. 
tension off of that one. Pull that one. Good job. It's a very unnatural position. I know, Julia, you're doing great. Okay, bite down, and we're going to do the other side, so grind this way. Perfect. Hold. Tip your chin up ever so slightly. Relax your tongue. Tension off of the one side. And pull. Good. Tension off of the other side. Okay. And take a break. Okay, we've given Julie a little break. Again, you want to consider patient comfort when you're doing these. So if Julie, you could please put those back in, the retractors. Um, our next shot is going to be the sagittal occlusal view, which shows us cusp form. And how we set that up is you have your patient turn at 45 degrees, tip your head up. And for me, I found it easier if I come down a little bit and kneel, because you're going to be shooting up at the teeth at this angle. So, and open as wide as you can. It's comfortable. And that's about it. So, our next shots are going to be the occlusal shot. So, on this, you want the patient to slightly roll the retractors down when you're doing your bottom. And you're going to be coming in at a little bit of an angle like this. So open just a bit. Open just a touch bigger. For me. Okay, and now tip your head up and roll those slightly up. Thank you. So our last series will be the mirror shots for the maxillary occlusal and the mandibular occlusal. And so, Julie, if you could put the retractors back in. Now what I've done is I've put the, warmed the mirror with some warm water and dried it. It'll help from uh, having it fog. So instructions for Julie would be roll the retractors up. One, two, three, hold your breath. Take a rest, and now we're going to do the bottom one, same thing. Ready? One, two, three, hold your breath. Okay, and we're all done. Nice job, Julia. Thank you very much. So this isn't part of your biostatic photographic series, but uh, we talked about if you want to feature a particular area of the mouth, having a black background can give a very aesthetic photograph. This is that smile line. Julie, if you put the retractors back in. So we're going to feature the lower anterior teeth. So here's all you're going to be doing. Roll those slightly down. You'll just place this in the area you want. Roll them down just a little bit more. Kind of, there we go. Perfect. Okay. And you just place it like that. And you want to take a couple from a few different angles. And just one more. And we are done. So I want to thank Julie for being such an excellent patient this morning, helping us with this. And I hope that uh, what you've seen today will help you with your level three photographic assignment. And I want to thank you very much. Take care. Did you get it?
Yeah, it stopped right when you said, okay. 